How do you come up with a plan for the last time you turn the sign from open to closed on your business? Today's guest, Michael, is going to help us answer that question. Welcome to Fox Talks Business Podcast with your host, Tanya Fox. Tanya has been an entrepreneur for over 20 years, owning retail, service, and franchise. She holds no punches and is never afraid to talk about the nitty gritty. Together, you'll explore the good, the bad, and the motivational of business life, turning obstacles into opportunities and failures into successes. So grab your favorite drink and let's have some fun. Here's your host, speaker, crafter, and collaborator, Tanya Fox. Michael is the president of the Van Group LLC a member of the Forbes Coaches Council and a licensed predictable success practitioner. Michael focuses his efforts on helping owners build and realize their value by creating the framework for continuity and scalability within their organizations. His area of expertise includes strategic facilitation, succession and transition planning, and mergers and acquisitions. He serves as a trusted advisor to the owners of companies who value his practical and personable approach and his ability to simplify complex business issues into an actionable plan. Michael is also the co-author of Buying Out the Boss, a successor's guide to succession planning, which looks at succession and transition planning from the perspective of the internal acquirer. He's a frequent guest on topics such as value building, succession and transition planning, and selling a business. So thank you so much for coming on the show today, Michael. I'm excited to learn more about you and your company. Well, thanks for having me, Tanya. I'm looking forward to talking. So tell, for our listeners, tell them a little bit of a background on where you sort of started from to now. Okay, so a little bit of background, the, the Van Group, which is, is my company, is we're a multi-generational family-owned firm. So I'm in business with my father, my mother, and my sister. Um, I joined the firm about 20 years ago after uh, kind of getting fed up with corporate and uh, living in Washington, D.C. I wanted to come back to uh, home where, you know, Traffic wasn't as crazy, and uh, there were some great opportunities to do something different besides working, you know, for government consulting and that type of thing. So my father said, "Well, why don't you come home and join the join the family firm and start our consulting group?" And I figured I'll do that for a little while, and then move back to Washington or somewhere else. And 20 years later, I'm still still here. Um, so it's been it's been a lot of fun. Obviously, working in a family business that can has its moments, but we've had a great, uh, great relationship and, and very few uh, conflicts, which is always enjoyable, you know, when you can work well with your family. Which sometimes is like, it's hard. I know I work with my spouse in one business and um, do you find that, um, like I know I found that sometimes trying to get that separation of going, okay, this needs to be business, this time needs to be family time, you know, kind of thing. Yeah, it has its moments because, it, to your point, it's it's difficult to determine where that line is. Right. It's funny. So we, this will sound ridiculous, but 19 of us go on vacation every year for two weeks, all in one house, right? So my sisters and my nieces and nephews and everything else. And one year, my sister said, Doug, can you guys just stop talking about business? And, you know, we said, well, it's because of business why we're able to do this. You right. Know? So it's, there's such a fine line as to when, when's it appropriate, when's it not appropriate, but it becomes so much of your life, you know, that it's, it's hard to, to separate. So if you've got a good relationship in business, hopefully you've got a good one at home that they're, they blend pretty well. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about what the Van Group does. So we are, um, you know, as described, we're a strategic consulting and transactional advisory firm uh, for the owners of privately held small, mid-sized companies. And we work in kind of three areas, we work in the value building stages of companies. So those we're looking at well, you know, I'm looking at an exit 10, 15, 20 years, and I want to take this company that I have, and how do I make it bigger and better? Um, the second stage, we do a tremendous amount of work in the succession and transition planning stage, where we have owners who are looking at, well, I want to get out of the company. You know, maybe there's an internal sale or an external sale. I don't know. Can you help me figure this out and get us positioned? And then the third is we have our transactional side, which is for our owners who are screaming, you know, just get me out of the business today. I'm tired of it. I want to sell and go to market. So we work in all three, all three areas. We're industry agnostic. So, you know, we can go from 
sell, you know, working in restaurants to uh, precision uh, aerospace manufacturing and reliability engineering. So we cover the, the whole gamut of, of industries. Which probably makes it every day exciting for you because you get to sort of see, you know, it's not just one genre kind of thing that, that you have to work with. Yeah, no, it's fun because you learn so much about these different industries. And what you, know, you ultimately learn is everything kind of applies anyways. Business is business. So yeah. the nomenclature might be a little bit different or the things that you pay at different might be different in aerospace versus engineering, but it's still the same uh, principles. You know, you need good people, you need a good plan, you need to execute effectively. If you're doing those, I don't care what industry you're in, you're going to you're gonna be successful. Yeah. And with a lot of people, you know, we're seeing such a rise in entrepreneurship right now. But one thing that typically happens, especially in a new business, is no one thinks of succession planning right off the bat. No one thinks about what their exit strategy is going to be. Um, you know, going out, they're just like, I just need to get this started and I need to put food on the table that maybe isn't bologna and craft dinner. <laughs> yes. So what are some tips you could give if someone is, you know, even thinking of starting a business or very new into it, what are some of the things that they should be paying attention to? Because ideally we don't want to work until, you know, we're one foot into the grave. We would like to have some of that retirement time. So what are some tips you could give business owners? Yeah, so the one tip is always be thinking about, well, what is the end game for this? You know, and I know it's, it's hard to, to think in those terms for a lot of, you know, because well, we don't like to think of endings. Right. right. A lot of people don't do retirement planning or estate planning because it's, it's messy and it's not something we want to think about. And when you're struggling with a startup, you know, the last thing you think about is how are we going to get out? Get out. <laughs> <laughs> Am I going to make payroll this week? Um, I'm just getting in. <laughs> you know, but you have to start to think through that because it, it drives, well, what type of company do you want to build? You know, and I think we were mentioning before that a lot of companies, we just start. And, you know, sometimes they end up really, really successful and, you know, with lots of employees and, you know, millions of dollars in revenues. Other times, you know, we've built ourselves a nice, a nice job. So an exit looks very different. Um, for someone who's built a, a sustainable company versus one who's built a really nice little career for themselves. So I think early on in the stage, you've got to make some decisions as to which type of company do you want to be. And when you do that, then you can start to plan what that exit looks like. You know, for me, I have, you know, a professional service firm. They, you know, I don't plan on having lots of employees. I know the end game is someday I'm going to kind of phase down and, and retire. So I built the business from, from that standpoint. I have other clients who, you know, we want to we want to triple in size over the next 15 years or, or long or more so we can get a really big exit. You know, so you go about the value building process differently, but you're also thinking now about, well, what does that exit look like and how do I prepare for it? You know, so making sure I do have something saleable or something that's easy to liquidate. And how do I deal with the unexpected things? You know, we always call it the hitting, get hit by the bus. Right. right. You know, we have a plan of what we're going to do, but what happens if something happens on that way? And that's where most entrepreneurs and business owners get uh, really messed up because they don't have a plan for that because we're all going to live forever. Um, right. And then something unexpected happens and now you have this business that's your, you know, a problem for your family or your, you know, your employees and everything else. And how do we clean this up? So at the worst case, there should always be a contingency plan put in place of, this is what's going to happen if something unexpected happens to me. We're going to, you know, we've got agreements with key employees or, you know, it's going to go to market and this is who's going to do it and who's going to run it for that period of time or great. This is how you're going to shut it down. So yeah. whether you're a small company or a big one, you know, you've got to, you've got to think about both how do you want the ending to be? And then how do you want the, it to end if you're don't get to your, your end point that you wanted. And I think that's true. What you were saying is like being realistic with it, because I know like I have a Taekwondo studio that my husband and I own, but it really is like when I really took a hard look at the company, really at the end of the day, it can be sold for what is in it. So like all of our materials, our equipment and stuff, because the base of the company, the growth and the success of the company is literally the two of us as instructors and our experience, which you can't sell that. So no, that was a hard thing to, to come to terms with because, of course, we've had it for 30 years. We, yeah. you know, we have the emotion in it because we have seen kids, you know, come to us at, you know, five years old and now they're married and having kids. And, you know, so that, that emotional value that sometimes businesses put on their company. 
Yeah, and that's um, that that's a hard thing to to realize for a lot of business owners because they do have something special. I mean, you know the statistics on how does how long does a business survive? Like in the U.S., it's something like ninety percent fatality rate. Don't make it in five years. So if you've built something that's that's lost, well, how could someone not want to own that? Yeah, want to give me money and value for it. But you know, the thing we always remind our smaller clients when you know starting that conversation is, how much would you pay to own your job? Because yeah. if you're working that much in the day-to-day of the business and it's that much about you, you have a job. It's yeah. a nice job. You control it and it's going to provide you a lot of things, but it may not provide you a big payday at the, uh, you know, that gold at the end of the rainbow, so to speak. So, Yeah. And I think that sometimes is what I hear the most from entrepreneurs is understanding whether or not they have, like you said, whether or not they have a business or they've secured themselves a job. And I think that's a hard thing to look up at something that's necessary. Yes, it is. So tell us a little bit about the book that you guys wrote. So we wrote a book called uh, Buying Out the Boss, The Succession Guide to Succession Planning. And it's written by my father and I, which, you know, is pretty unique to have a father-son run it, write a book on Absolutely. transition planning. Um, you know, we're, we're a multi-generational look at it. So, and from a family business. So it's got some interesting aspects, but we wrote it um, from the perspective of the internal buyer. Um, you know, whether that's a family member or a key employee who was interested in acquiring the company they work for. Um, most of the books out there and there's, you know, this, the opportunity of succession planning for consultants is just, you know, mouthwatering because there's all these baby boomers going to retire and they have all these businesses. But all those books out there are really written for the exiting owner. You know, this is what you need to do to get yourself ready for an exit. And that's a great, you know, a great need. But what about the other side, the ones who are going to buy those businesses? You know, what right. resource did they have to understand the, the process? Because there's a whole different level of risk for an internal buyer. You know, it's, it's not like I'm looking at an outside business and if it doesn't go, it doesn't go. I work for this company. My job is at line. This could be my parents or someone I've known, you know, a whole lifetime. And now we're going to get into a business negotiation. And those can be messy because money's involved and emotions involved and egos involved. So you know, it changes the dynamic uh, pretty quickly. So they're not, you're, you're not a typical arm's length uh, transaction. Yeah. We wanted to have a, a guide for someone to understand what's that look like. You know, what should be they, should they expect um, from, you know, the value side to how do you have those initial conversations to, you know, even what do you do after you've bought the company? You know, a lot of people go, great. I have all these changes I want to make. Yeah. But, you know, that may not be the best thing to do right away. So how do you go about doing that? And then how do you deal with the legacy costs, right? Those, those deals, your father, or your mother, or, you know, had cut with other employees, those special situations that now, you know, they're, they're costing you money and they're costing you pain. How do you deal with those? So our book yeah. addresses those types of things within it. We'll make sure we have a link to where people can find the book as well um, yeah. for it. I wanted to talk to you a little bit too um, about, you had talked about in 2013 that you had some transitioning that, that was happening within the business. And I'd like to talk a little bit more about that because I think a lot of entrepreneurs find that, especially when they're in service businesses, that all of a sudden they see this huge shift in clients or, um, so talk to us a little bit about your experience when that happened to you. Yeah, when I so when I started the business, you know, I started like everybody else and was scrambling for, you know, any clients and I was lucky. I I hit on one really great client who was at a, a great uh point in their in their business. They were doing a couple million dollars and needed help. Um by two thousand thirteen they had grown to fifty million dollars. You know, and I was along for that whole ride as their strategic advisor doing the merger and acquisition work and facilitating leadership teams. So a lot of my business was built around that particular client and then a couple companies that were very complimentary to them. When in 2013, it was time for them to, to exit, you know, the private equity group that was buying them didn't need me for advice, right. for guidance. And, you know, a couple of the other clients, you know, were at that kind of same point in their, uh, in their career. So here I was in you know, 2013, I was losing basically all my clients. I had two young kids at home. So it was like, all right, you better figure out. Now what? <laughs> yeah. I've been doing this whole uh, special, you know, consulting practice for, for all these years, for 10, 12 years. And now it's going away. So how do I reinvent myself? 
And so that's that was the pivot point that we hit when we had to start to think about the business model and you know what do we want to do and what don't we want to do. So we started to make the transition towards you know replicating the things that we had done with with that company, but doing it on smaller scales with smaller companies, you know, and trying to diversify that client base. So it's now you know if you look at our I think a couple of years ago I looked at we had sixty seven different clients that we had I had transacted business with in that year. If you would look at that five years ago, it was eight or ten. Yeah. So in the whole dynamic of the of the business, still as a trusted advisor, but changing the perspective on how we delivered what we delivered and the commitment we would make to each company. And I think we see a lot more of that happening. Um, I see it definitely a lot more in my in my bookkeeping clients that I have is sometimes you get comfortable. I've had years like that in that company where I've gotten comfortable because I've had the same people for 15 years, you know, but then all of a sudden, yeah, they sell and the new owners are like, no, we're good. We already have our team. And then you're like, Oh <laughs> yeah, I wasn't counting on that. I wasn't counting on that. Like it just been so long. You just didn't think about it. Right. You're just going to have these right. people forever. And why, why are you selling? I mean, you're a good client of mine. Don't sell. Don't move on with your life. <laughs> right. No, Don't you and really? It, and it's hard when they, when they do that because you're not prepared, particularly if you've gotten your business to a state where you're happy with it. Yeah. With, you know, who you're, what you're doing and how much money you're making. And then suddenly that gets thrown into disarray. You know, so now you've got to reinvent yourself and, you know, market yourself differently perhaps. And, um, you know, get on top of the changes that are occurring in your industry. You know, like you mentioned bookkeeping, that world has changed so much probably. So you know, much. You know, yeah. Morning from, you know, a remote, you know, someone will do everything remote, just upload it. And, to grow up with your bookkeeper would come into the office every week. Yeah. And that's what it started for me. Like when I first started in 98, that's what it was. Like I went into people's businesses and then, yeah, now I don't see them anymore. Like I have some clients that I think I've met once and I've had them for 10 years, but it's just, it's just like technology has allowed that to change and stuff. Yeah. But um, it definitely, it's definitely been an interesting change in the industry, but um, you, yeah, you do see it a lot more. And I find too, that I see a lot more because it's one of those things that isn't really, there's no huge regulations on it. Um, then everybody's like, I've entered before at my job, I'll become a bookkeeper. Right. <laughs> you just see it and you're like, Oh my God. <laughs> just because you've used QuickBooks, does that make you a QuickBooks or accounting expert? But, yeah. <laughs> you know, in your profession, that's, that's pretty common. Very common, very common. And it, and, and that's where I think my biggest pivot point was, was before um, it was, you know, really word of mouth. Like I never had to advertise. I've been very, very fortunate that most of my clients have referred me on and I've been able to go that way. But I see a lot of new people coming into the game and they're like, I can't get anybody. And it's a dog eat dog world, right? Of trying to get that first one that is gonna, you know, take you. No doubt. So um, what is, you know, cause you went from corporate world, you know, into essentially self, self-employment or being an entrepreneur. What was the biggest change for you? What was the biggest thing that you were like, oh, I didn't see that coming? That's a, that's a good question. <laughs> I, um, I don't think the understanding of how hard it would be to land clients in, you know, that sales cycle and that sales process to validate who you are and that you had knowledge that was worth, worth paying for. You know, so, you know, when you start, you just kind of go out there and you start talking to everyone that, that you can and who wouldn't want to, you know, hire you because right. everyone's got a business and everyone needs, needs what you do, but it takes a long time to realize that you're only going to get those people who are at a tipping point where they're really at a pain point for what they need, um, that you do. And, you know, the timing on that is, is really hard to, to hit. So I think that was one of the the big challenges. I thought I was just going to come out. Hey, I'm a smart guy. I came out of a Fortune 500 consulting firm. Who wouldn't want me in the small in the small mid sized business world? Then you find out that no, that's not the case. <laughs> and it's a lot of like. Um, do you find it's a lot of like personal branding, especially nowadays? Like you really have to. You're you're selling yourself essentially. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, in all our business today is almost all referrals. You know, it's come in that way. And, you know, it's been long enough now where I don't even sometimes know where the referral came. I just know it came in from a referral because someone said, well, I should call 
call you. Right. That's that's great. But you know, that happens over so many years of just kind of being out there beating the bushes and meeting people and, and getting your story story told. Um, and I've always found that that works great on a one-on-one -on -one basis because what what we do is not something that you can just throw an ad out in the newspaper. Not every business needs what we do. You know, yeah. they're hitting a very specific point in time. So by building those relationships and just telling your story over and over again to anyone who will listen, um, you know, whether it's a, for us, it's a lot of bankers and accountants and lawyers and financial advisors who refer us. Um, you know, you just got to get out there and tell them that story so they understand it. So when that client does pop up with that issue, they go, oh, you should call these guys. And, uh, and we've been lucky to build the business that way. And I think that is key too, that people don't think of that because we're so used to that immediate, um, you know, I put, I put an ad or something out, a client, you know, I get a customer that comes in and gives me a little bit of money, but they don't think of that long-term thing of, like you said, going out and sharing your story that maybe you'll meet a bunch of people that don't need you right now. But as soon as they do, they go, wow, who is that person that I talked to at that one event, you know, and that, that is, that is the best advertising I've found in, in my experience. Absolutely. I mean, we do a lot of transactional work. So selling, selling companies and I can meet, you know, I met an owner the other day. Well, I don't, I don't have a need for your services today. Okay. That's, that's fine. Just want to introduce myself. Thanks for taking the meeting. But I have some that, you know, I sold the company last year. I started with them seven years ago with those initial introductions and just kind of getting to know them. And it took that long before they finally said, you know what, we're ready to sell. Mm -hmm. You know, So that type of work goes into building those, those relationships. And it's not like you're, you know, contacting them all the time, but you're staying front in mind with them and, and, um, and do that. But, you know, that call might come five years later after that initial, initial contact. Yeah. You know, remember what you do and you were, you were memorable and you know, you were yourself. Yeah, exactly. So tell us about what, you know, it's so important in business to have a passion. So what makes you so passionate about what you do? What's the thing that kind of keeps you going? <laughs> I think for, for me, what I love is I love the small and mid-sized business in watching them grow. You know, it's yeah. to me, you know, everyone gets excited about the, the startups, right? These little companies and, you know, great, we're going to build the next Google or, or anything else. And startups are great and the, they have their, their space. But I love it when I take a company that's got 10 or 15, you know, employees and now they're 30 employees or 50 employees and they've built something of, of value because the impact they have on the number of people, right? I mean, it's not only just themselves as individuals, but how many employees they, they impact. And also that impact into the community, you know, small and mid-sized businesses are the ones who support your charitable charities and, you know, they're yeah. involved in the communities because they live here and they, they work here. So for me, always seeing that job growth in our, in our clients as they, as they grow um, is, is what I get excited about is helping them, you know, realize that. Yeah. And I, I agree with you for me, that's always, it's why I still have my accounting and bookkeeping company is, I, that that's my favorite part too, is just watching these people that started, you know, even just by themselves as a solo printer and now have, you know, 15, 20, 25 employees and, you know, that I got to take that journey with them. So it's kind of like you get, you have all of these, you know, it's almost like having kids, right? You get to watch them kind of grow up and you're like, well, that was exciting. Yeah. And you, you know, you get to spend, I'm, I'm lucky even today, a lot of my clients are long-term clients. You know, when that 2013 hit, I started picking up new ones. There's still, you know, a lot of them are still clients here seven years, you know, out. And for a consultant to be able to say that, that every quarter of my clients are meeting where every time they have a need in their business, they're giving me a call because they trust me to, to provide them the right guidance on, on that. But, you know, that's, I don't know how you ask for anything better as, a, as, a, as an advisor is to know that someone trusts you with their business, which is, you know, you know, their most important asset outside of, you know, family or things. And yeah. They, you know, they spend 60, 70, 80 hours a week into it. All their, their wealth is in it. So to trust you to be able to um, guide them on that is, uh, is incredibly humbling. So if people are looking for more information, are they even not too sure, you know, they know they're heading in that direction or it's something that even maybe even this episode just peaks for them of saying, you know, 
I never really thought of that. I've just been going day by day. How can they get a hold of you to see if you guys would be a good fit to work together? So you can definitely find us on our, our website, www.van, which is with two N's, V-A-N-N, dash group.com um, is a great way. And then also my, on LinkedIn, which is, you know, linkedin.com backslash Michael Van. You know, great ways to, to reach me. And I think our email is like, let's go at van-group.com, something really, really simple. And, you know, our, our approach is there's never any cost to talk to us. You know, we're just happy to provide any guidance that we can. And if it makes sense to do business together, we're happy to, you know, go down that path. If not, we've met somebody new and hopefully provided a little uh, benefit both ways. I love that. That's a philosophy I've always done too. I'd rather have the conversation first. So not everything needs to have a dollar attached to well, it. It's, it's always funny when someone comes in and says, well, well, how much do I owe you for talking? Well, nothing. Yeah. <laughs> you have to pay me to meet me. You know, I'm not, uh, I'm not that special. <laughs> Well, I appreciate you taking time. We're going to have all of the links where people can find you too on our uh, blog and our so social media posts so they can just do a quick click. And I really appreciate you taking the time. And we'll also have the link for the book. And you had um, an offer for us, did you not, for the listeners? Yeah, I've got to get that uh, over to you. So I'll get that. Okay. So we'll have a promo code attached to the episode as well. Um, so you can get a discount on the book if you're interested in um, buying out the boss. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you for having me. Thank you. After I had the conversation with Michael, I sat down and started to think about my businesses over the years that I've had them. Some that I sold, some that I just closed. And when I really sat and thought about it, I realized that never once did I have a plan for exiting because when I started them, that was the farthest thing from my mind. But when it came time to either deciding to sell or deciding to close, the decisions weren't easy ones. And if I would have had that plan in place, maybe I would have been able to refer to something that would have taken a little bit of the emotion out of it. And it's something that definitely going forward, I'm going to make sure that I have not only for myself, but to help family and friends who are around me that always try to support me. So I encourage you to do the same thing, whether you um, take that free phone call with the van group and see how it is that they can help you, or whether you just sit down and come out with some point blank stuff of what you would like to see happen, or visualize what your retirement is going to look like, and get that plan in place. It's going to help not only you to have some clarity, but even have a goal in place of what you want the last joyous years of your life to look like. So this is also something if you're just starting a business that you should add to your list to think about doing. What is your plan for the business in its entirety? Now this will change over time, but it's always good to have a little something written down. Don't forget to also head over to our website at foxtalksbusiness.ca, click on blogs at the top, and you'll be able to get quick links to all of the areas that you can contact and follow the van group, as well as find the link for their book, Buying Out the Boss, and a special promo code just for you, Foxy listener. So whether you're on your way in or on your way out, make sure that you're having fun, because if you're not having fun, why are you doing it? <laughs>